Great. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're at week two of our What If series. I, Pastor Stan has given us a great start. Uh, last week, he was talking about how small decisions can actually lead to big changes. Uh, I'm sure that would happen with my diet if I would make some small decisions about pushing it away. But we're talking about really, truly significant things here. Uh, and so what if, what if I'm just one decision away from making a major change in my life? Uh, today we're going to look at the power of gratitude and how that one small decision can make an incredible change in our life. A man who learned that once was a man by the name of John Graylig. A few years ago, I was reading the Tampa Tribune while on vacation, and there was a man who was at a low point in his life. Everything had fallen apart, and he was at a desperately low place walking in the woods one day, just so down about what was happening in his life and his family. And all of a sudden, he remembered something. He'd received a thank you card from somebody. And he realized how that much that lifted him up. And so what he decided to do, he said, I'm going to stop focusing on all the negative that's going on in my life and see if it makes a difference. What if I start looking at the good things and actually being thankful for them? So what he did, he made a commitment that he would write three thank you notes a day for things that he was truly grateful for. And he did that. And that totally transformed his life. Matter of fact, so much it transformed his life. Dr. Oz brought him on and they had a whole show about that. When I read about that in the Tampa Tribune, I remember just deciding, I'm gonna look up gratitude a little bit more. Uh, and this is what the secular world says. We're not talking about the Christian world right here. This is what the secular world says. Let me read several things for it. It says, being grateful impacts overall experience of happiness, improved physical, emotional, and social well-being, greater optimism and happiness, improved feelings of connection in times of loss, increased self-esteem, heightened energy levels, a strengthened heart, an immune system, decreased blood pressure, decreased stress, anxiety, depression, and headaches. Anybody in for that? Good grief. And they said, this is the secular world saying, this is all gratitude. Boy, as I researched a little bit more, listen, you can see this in your book right here, some quotes from just a couple Christian authors. There's many more who respond on this. James McDonald uh, said this, of all human emotions, gratitude is the most powerful. So powerful is gratitude, it can obliterate fear hopelessness and doubt. Gratitude can heal a broken heart. It can slow the aging process. I need to be a little more thankful here and restore broken relationships. Gratitude creates hope and hope brings joy. And it is in joy, not fear, that we find strength. Another quote by another Christian author, Nancy DeMoss said this, to a significant degree, your emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being, as well as the health and stability of relationships with others, will be determined by your gratitude quotient. Gratitude has this incredible power to make such a difference. What if I started living with a grateful heart, with gratitude day by day? That's what we're going to look at uh, today. Listen to what Philippians says in scripture, do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Do you know when we shine, when we really stand out? It's when we do some things without grumbling. Well, no, that's not exactly. It, when we do most, well, no, that's not exactly when we do everything without grumbling or arguing, you stand out. Matter of fact, Scripture says you shine like a star. Matter of fact, the saints of old used to say, say this. If they saw somebody living with ingratitude, they'd say that person is drifting from the Lord. Isn't that something? Ingratitude, a person who's not thankful, is actually drifting from the Lord the saints of old would look and see. So what is gratitude? 
Gratitude is a feeling of thankfulness. That's what I want you to write in that blank right there. It's a feeling of thankfulness and appreciation. Uh, I remember when our kids were younger. You, now you go say thank you. It's not that. <laughs> Where the kid goes, okay, thank you. It's not that. Okay, It's actually a real feeling and appreciation of a thankfulness for what has been given. The other thing that uh, stands out to me is the story I told earlier about John Craig not focusing on the bad but on the good. Gratitude can lift us out of an obsession on focusing on what we don't have. That's what I want you to write down here. What we don't have, we focus on that and it helps us focus on a thankful heart on what we do have and what God has so graciously given to us. Listen to what Psalms 92 says right here. It says, it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare his steadfast love in the morning and his faithfulness by night. You know, that's how we ought to start the day, declaring God's loving kindness. You know, the loving kindness of the Lord never ceases. It never comes to an end. Scripture says it's new every morning. What a way to start the day. God, I thank you that I can trust your loving kindness today. And when we finish today, Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness to me all day. But we're going to look at very quickly here, why is gratitude good? The first thing is it changes our perspective. That's what I want you to write there. It changes our perspective. A little book in the Old Testament called Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a prophet and everything was going wrong. And so he starts crying out to God and asking God, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And there's no answer. So he starts crying out to God. God, can you help me in this situation? Can you do this? Can you do that? And you know what? He gets a big zero. And then after kind of complaining, listen to what happens in chapter 3 in Habakkuk. It says, though the fig tree does not bud, and though there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there's no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. What had changed? What in this circumstance had changed from chapter to chapter? Actually nothing. What changed was his perspective and his attitude. He started taking joy in the Lord, in God his Savior, in that focus that gratitude changed everything. On the next page, it talks about what is wisdom right here. Wisdom is seeing things. That's what I want you to write there. Wisdom is seeing things from God's perspective. When I started putting God in the picture, so many times when things were going wrong, at least in my life, I realized I've left God out of the picture. I need to keep him in the picture, see it greater. I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of a watch or seen a picture of it and you got these little, uh, all of a sudden things just spinning and spinning, these things just turning, and all of a sudden they're hitting another wheel and the other wheel's turning the opposite way. Well, if you were just focused on one part of it, the wheel, you'd just say, wait a minute, everything's going backwards. But you know, there's a purpose. One wheel's turning this way, the other wheel's turning that way. And then all of a sudden the other wheel's turning right the other way. Sometimes we don't have the whole perspective. Wisdom sees things greater than what your circumstances are showing you today. I don't know what your circumstances are shouting at you today, or maybe it's just going great. But there's a bigger perspective. And wisdom looks at that perspective. Scripture says here, give thanks in everything, not for everything evil that happens, but in whatever's happening. God, you're there. I'm looking at it from a bigger perspective. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The next bullet point there says gratitude acknowledges his presence. Okay? It sees him in the picture. Gratitude acknowledges his presence and preeminence. Listen to what it says in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The psalmist says, God, I see you in the picture, even though my circumstances are terrible. Your rod and their staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup 
overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me ask you a question here. Have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever been discouraged? You were discouraged. I was discouraged one time that I was discouraged, and it was on the end of the weekend of encouragement. Now, this is how messed up I am. Oh boy, so many times I just have to look to Scripture, get the Lord to help me. I remember one day, it was a little while after that, I was reading uh, Scripture, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Well, that morning, my circumstances were real bleak. And to be honest with you, that verse wasn't helping me at all. Matter of fact, after I read it several times, I went back and I was just honest with the Lord and said, Lord, I need some help. This doesn't even help me. I don't even know what the word ascribe means. Well, I looked in the middle of the Bible down a little lower and there was a little note, ascribe means to give. And I started looking at that and I started writing it down on a piece of paper. Give to the Lord, O mighty ones. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory do His name. And then I wrote down this. In my present circumstance, give glory to the Lord. And I realized at that moment, I wasn't giving God any glory in that moment. I started thinking about who God was, and I remembered this verse for, quickly. Lord, you're my shepherd. And I start, said, Lord, I give you glory today that you're my shepherd. That even though I'm walking through a valley, I don't want to walk through. You're with me. I give you glory for that. God, I give you glory that I can trust where you're leading. God, I give you glory for this. I started thinking of uh, verses in Isaiah that he's the wonderful counselor. And I said, God, I give you glory today that you will counsel me and you will help me. You're the wonderful counselor. I give you glory today that you're mighty God, that you're actually bigger than my circumstance. And I want to give you glory today for that. I want to give you glory today, Lord, that you're the prince of peace, that a peace that I can't grab at all. You're the, you're the owner of all peace, and you're my Savior. Do you know all of a sudden, as I started giving God the glory to his name, as I started looking at his preeminence in the situation and giving him thanks for that, things started changing. Gratitude will make such a difference. Scripture says right here, uh, as we go to the next bullet point, it provides protection. Do you know gratitude provides protection? Now this one shocked me just a little. I had to study on this a little bit more. But John Piper tells a story uh, of this. He said, suppose you were in a city surrounded by the enemy that was coming in trying to destroy you. And all of a sudden in that same city were sympathizers who were going to try to destroy you. In that process, he said right there, you heard that all of a sudden there was a song that you could sing that would drive them away. Would you want to know that song? Boy, I would be teaching everybody that song. He says it's the song of thanksgiving that drives them away. And he uses these passages, uh, Colossians 4.2, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. When we're being watchful, he says we're protecting ourselves. But he says we protect ourselves, we're watchful by thanksgiving. When I'm living with that attitude of thanksgiving, it's actually protecting me. Listen to what Philippians says again. Do not be anxious about anything. What? About anything. Don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. Do you know gratitude will actually protect you? It will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I have a little uh, statement there I want you to fill in. It says, joy doesn't make you grateful, but gratitude makes you joyful. We need to switch it around. Don't depend on our circumstances. We need to also start asking God and offering to God gratitude. And what a difference does that make? Where does gratitude come from? It comes from understanding the grace of God. I love the story in Luke 7 where Simon the Pharisee is at a house and he's invited Jesus in and Jesus comes in. He's sitting there uh, just sitting down, relaxing, reclining. And a lady who's a great sinner 
comes in. You remember the story? She's so broken over her own sin, she's weeping. She's pouring oil on his feet, Jesus' feet. With her hair, she's cleaning his feet, kissing his feet. And Simon goes, well, what a prophet this guy is. He doesn't even know how great a sinner is sitting at his feet. Jesus realizes what's going on, and he says, Simon, listen here. The, if, there were two men who owed a great debt. One owed 500 and one owed 50. If the man that, who they owed the debt to came and forgave both of them, which one would be more loving, more grateful? And Simon says, I guess the one that was forgiven the most. And Jesus says, you're right. This woman realizes how much she's been forgiven. Do you want to have gratitude? You need to understand God's grace. In these last passages here, I just want you to realize this. We deserve rejection. Simon didn't realize that, that he deserved rejection. The woman did, but she got acceptance. Simon didn't realize that we deserve wrath. Oh, she did, but she found mercy. Simon didn't realize that we deserve hell. But she did. She got heaven. Simon didn't realize that we deserve an adversary. Oh, she did. And she actually found an advocate in Jesus. Simon didn't realize that one day we're going to be on trial. Oh, she did. But she said all of a sudden she found a crown because of what Jesus taught her and the forgiveness she found. The key for us to find is gratitude right here. I love the story of Corey Ten Boone. Corey Ten Boone was from a Dutch family. She, they were believers, and they were helping the Jewish people escape uh, persecution. They were all of a sudden captured and taken to prison, her and her sister, and it was a horrible situation they lived in in the concentration camps. They would listen to the screaming and the torture that would go on. They would try to block it out of their ears. And then they got moved to a different barracks. And in that barracks, it was terrible. It was infested with fleas and all sorts of smells. And they just did not know what to do. And then Betsy, her sister, read this in Scripture. And Betsy said this. She, Betsy said, I've discovered God's answer. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's it, Corey. That's his answer. We need to give thanks in all circumstances. That's what we can do. We can start right now giving God thanks about this, every single thing about this new barracks. Corey said, I stared at her. Then I looked around the dark, the foul air roomed. They thanked God for the fact that they were together. They thanked God that they had a Bible. They even thanked God for the horrible crowd of prisoners in there because more people could hear God's word. And then Betsy thanked God for the fleas. The fleas... Corey said, this is too much. Betsy, there's no way God can make me grateful for a flea. Give thanks in all things, Betsy said. It doesn't say be thankful in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are part of the place where God has put us. So they stood there and thanked God for the fleas. Corey said, I never believed that anything good would come. But she found out that Betsy was right. It was actually the fleas that kept the guards from coming into that cabin, that barracks, and abusing the women. It was actually the fleas that kept them where they could keep the Bible and learn from that. Gratitude changed everything. Let me encourage you here today, wherever you are, whatever your circumstances in life, look at it from a different perspective. Don't focus on the wrong that's going on. The tipping point in your life can be offering gratitude to God. Take time to look for what good is every day. What good is there? Give thanks to Him. Declare His loving kindness in the morning and His faithfulness at night. And I believe God will use that to transform you. Have a good week. Put into practice these things. Be sure to do those devotions. Take time in your group to talk about these truths. Thanks for your time this week.